Now that we've demonstrated how envelopes work, certainly how an ADSR envelope works, by connecting it to the amplitude so that we can really hear what's going on, let's jump back into the filter so that we can play with how an ADSR envelope can affect a filter's cutoff. So you can see that we've got the ADSR commands here, and this contour dial will adjust how much the ADSR envelope affects the filter cutoff. So what we're going to do is turn the filter contour right up. And I'm just going to turn the key down a little bit, well, to off, just so that we can be absolutely sure that no matter what key we press, we're getting exactly the cutoff that we want. So you can see here that we've got the, the basic, pretty much turned off um, dial settings. It instantly jumps to the filters cutoff and then instantly jumps to the sustain level. And the sustain level is the maximum, so it's exactly the same as the cutoff, which means that these three dials are pretty much passed through and they don't make any difference. The only thing that's in the middle is release. And this means that it takes a certain amount of time for the cutoff to go back to exactly where it would be. And normally it doesn't make much difference what release is set to, but because we've got the amp envelope, meaning the release of the sound is tailing out, we're going to hear more what happens when we do the release. So at the moment, I've got the contour turned up. If I turn it off and play the key, then turn it up and play the key. We only hear a difference in the fact that the filter, when I let go of the key, drops down a little bit. So. If I turn that right up, it takes a long time. And if I turn it right down, okay, I get much more of a, uh, a quick jump, despite the fact that the amp envelope is still tailing out the sound. Now, if we turn up the attack phase on the filter, what we're going to do is make it take longer for the filter to reach where it's going to get to. So. Here that when I press the key, it almost as if I'm turning that knob myself on the cutoff. It's bringing the low pass filter into contention, and it'll be even more uh, explicit if we turn up the resonance so that we can really hear that movement. And you can really hear when I let go of the key in the release section of the filter envelope kicks in as well. So if I change that all the way up. Okay, what happened there is that it takes so long for the release section of the filter to come back to zero. And it may be that on full, it really never does. It takes so long that the next time I press the key, the cutoff is still open so that it doesn't make any difference what the attack is set to. So if I have that filter set to zero, I can press it like that and always hear that long attack. And if I turn it up, it starts to get to the point where the filter isn't releasing by the time I press the key the next time. And if I turn it really high up, it gets to the point where it's not doing it at all. So if I chop down the release time, on the amplification envelope so that I'm getting and then I turn down the release on the envelope in the filter as well so that I can be absolutely sure of the fact that I'm only using attack decay and sustain then I can turn this attack down a bit and get that squelching kind of sound. And that squelching sound is coming from the fact that it's taking uh, a small amount of time, but a, a distinguishable amount of time nonetheless to open that filter up. And because the resonance bump's quite high on the filter, it's getting that resonance bump, which is giving it the squelch. So if I turn the resonance up really high, we get a quite 
unpleasant actually. Uh, sorry about that if you're using headphones. Uh, squealy kind of sound. We turn it up quite high, but not super high. We get it very, very high indeed. And of course, if we change the de facto standard, the cutoff dial, then it will change how all of these work because it's changing the point that they're all aiming for. So. Okay. Now, of course, if I change this to the K, you should be able to guess what's going to happen. It's going to take longer to get to this sustain level. And because this sustain level is on high, it's not going to do anything. So we need to turn this sustain level all the way down. Okay. Now you may notice that as I'm pressing this, sometimes I'm actually getting the filter still closed. And that's because I've still got this slide turned on. If I turn this down and turn it off here. Then I get a, a, exactly the same re-triggering of those, both of those envelopes as I press the keys. So having played with how the amplification envelope works or the amplitude envelope works and heard how it makes a difference to how you hear the sound and now having played with it on a filter so you can adjust how almost as if having these these are little helpers that turn the knob for you so you don't have to you should be able to imagine what you could achieve if you had an envelope on any of the other knobs and just very quickly, you will notice, you may have wondered why we dropped out of these three knobs here. If I just reset this filter knob so that, that the envelope isn't affecting the filter anymore, these here is are a, another set of envelopes that can adjust a whole bunch of things from this drop down. Now it's a more simple filter. This is just an attack decay filter and there's an intensity dial that will allow us to turn up how much the attack and decay are changing whatever they're attached to. If we change this to oscillator one and two, this is actually going to change their pitch in semitones. So at the moment, because they're both turned off and the intensity is turned off, I've just got my standard sound. If I turn the intensity all the way up, there's very little change. There's a small change to the sound because they're not totally disabled despite the fact they're turned down. If I change the attack on this, what do you think is going to happen? Well, okay. That attack is making it so that it takes a certain amount of time as defined by the attack for the semitone dials on oscillator one and two, as set to by here, to turn up to the settings I want them on. And then the decay is going back to where they are set to on the dial. And because it's set to instant, it's jumping straight back in. So if I turn this up a little bit more, you can probably guess what's going to happen. And you can play this with lots of fun, like the old classic kind of rave style sound basses. So there are different types of envelopes. There are a couple of slightly more complicated envelopes in ADSR. There's ones that have hold sections that define the, what happens in between uh, sustain and decay. 
and various other things. And there are some that are a little bit more uh, involved than just attack and decay, but not quite as much as uh, ADSR. The vast majority of envelopes nowadays are either extremely simple attack and decay envelopes or uh, ADSR envelopes. So with that in mind, you'll remember that we said we were going to learn by doing and doing things as we went. There were loads of little things inside independence that would allow us to do things with envelopes and do things with filters and so on and so forth. And now that we've learned them in Electro, you can go on and go forth. And as we go to the next parts of the course, we'll introduce things that you'll realize that you've already learned because there's so many integrated concepts in music production that if you learn the basics like we're doing, you can go much further, much more quickly. So next up though, because we're not finished with synths yet, we've got to look at the LFOs. Now LFOs are another concept that will be replicated in various different types of instruments and effects. And when we learn them in Electro, you'll see exactly how they work and be able to apply them to everything else.